The 2014 update to Adobe Muse CC that came out today gave us one of the most significant features that we've been given so far in an update to Adobe Muse, and that is in-browser editing anywhere. And for those of you who have not used in-browser editing yet, I don't blame you. Previously, it only worked with Adobe Business Catalyst, and I know a lot of us host our websites using our own hosting companies. Personally, I use Just Host. They allow me to host as many domains as I want, and I do host quite a few on one account. So I want to show you guys, in case you're hosting multiple clients on one account, if you are using hosting that uses a cPanel, uh, then it'll look something like this uh, when you log in to the administrator side of your cPanel. And uh, you should be able to create something called an FTP account. Because uh, essentially, if you're hosting websites for your clients and you try to set up in-browser editing for them, you're going to have to give them your username and password for your hosting, in which case they'll technically have access to everything you have hosted. So if you don't want to do that, which I promise you don't want to do that, then you want to go and create an FTP account just for that client. So this is assuming you've already set up the website for your client, you're already publishing to it. Um, if you are, and if you already have published uh, the website, then I would make absolutely sure that when you go to File and choose Site Properties, that under Content, you have Enable In-Browser Editing turned on. So for my web page, I do already have that turned on. So when you publish, you may be publishing for yourself using your login credentials that go to your hosting that you have set up because you've never had to share them with anyone before, and that's good. But now you do have to share them in order to use in-browser editing. So rather than sharing my login credentials, I'm going to go back over here to the cPanel. I'm going to go to FTP accounts. And if you're using the cPanel, you should see something like this that allows you, and again, the cPanel is on your hosting with your hosting company. If you're not happy with your hosting company and you don't see anything like this and are having trouble setting it up, again, I use Just Host. Works great and I can host as many websites as I want and it's very inexpensive. So right now I'm going to create a login here for my client. Uh, it's giving me this at trifectaphoto.com because that's my first domain name that I set up with Just Host, uh, but it doesn't really matter because uh, I'm going to create a prefix here. So I'm going to name it Drift TV at trifectaphoto.com and uh, I'm going to create a password here which you guys aren't allowed to know. Good luck guessing it. Go ahead and try. Alright, so directory. This is really important here. It's asking me what directory on my host am I trying to give access to using this domain name. Now in my case I already know that my website is being published to a folder called drifttv.com not just drifttv. So I've got to correct that. And if you don't know where your website is being published to, or if you haven't published yet, um, then you'll want to figure that out when you're setting up the domain and the hosting for that website. And if you aren't positive, if you think you know where this website's getting published to, but you aren't sure, uh, you could do a test publish and then you can go back and you can do what I'm doing right now. In fact, my web page that we were looking at here in Muse has already been published. I'm going back and republishing it and setting up these new login credentials with you guys to show you how to do it. Uh, so again, this folder here, this is the folder that your website's being published to, which probably was already dictated if you've set up um, a domain name and you've set up hosting for that domain name. This, this has probably already been dictated. So in my case, uh, I went and opened up Cyberduck and I connected to my hosting through Cyberduck, which is FTP software. Uh, you'll find a link to that from museresources.com. Um, and I browsed around and I made sure that I got the name of this folder right. And, and I do know now that I have the name of this folder right. So that's the folder that the website's going to be published in, uh, which really only matters now. I only have to get this right one time. I don't have to continue remembering this uh, because these login credentials are going to remember this directory for me. So I've created a username, I've created a password, and I need to remember those. Those are going to be important in a moment. Uh, but the directory, I've got that hammered in there, and I don't need to remember that. And if this is confusing, you may need to consult your uh, support for your hosting company because this could differ from one ho hosting company to another. So now I'm going to hit Create FTP Account. And now that I've created that FTP account, essentially I've allowed access to that directory that I specified here uh, using those login credentials. So I'm going to head over to Adobe Muse again, and I'm going to say File. And then I'm going to say Upload to FTP Host. 
and it asks me, who's my FTP server? This, the answer to this question comes from when you set up your hosting account. So mine happens to be ftp.trifectaphoto.com. Now my username and password, those are the things that I just set up, that I just created when I set up that FTP account. And I'm cool with storing my login credentials in Adobe Muse, so that way I don't have to type them over and over again. It'll allow me to skip this step when I, uh, when I publish updates. So I'm going to hit next and it's going to try to log in. Looks like it logged in successfully. If it didn't, it would have given me an error message already. Domain name, I'm just going to fill in the actual domain name of this website, which I already purchased and uh, got all set up. And folder, I can leave blank because I already set up which directory or folder this is going to get published to uh, while I was dealing with my hosting company a moment ago. So I'm going to hit OK and it's now going to publish any of the new pages or new images to the host. I haven't really changed much, so it could go, should go pretty quick. So now that it's done, it's warning me that my form, because I have this little contact form, is going to a different email address than my host, which is totally okay. So I'm just going to hit view site, make sure that it uploaded successfully, and it did. Looks like it uploaded just fine. So now that we know that that's okay, we're ready for in-browser editing. Now I can close this, and I can go to inbrowserediting.adobe.com. And once you get there, let me cut off the end of this. Once you get there, it's going to ask you for the domain name of the site that you're trying to edit. So in my case, it's drifttv.com, and I'll hit start editing. Here we go, and now it's asking me for a username and password. That is the username and password that I just set up for my uh, FTP account that I set up on Just Host in my case. So I'm going to type in drifttv at trifectaphoto.com. I'm going to put in my top secret password here, and I'm going to hit sign in. And when I do so, Safari is asking me if I want to save the password. Not necessary. And there is my website. So it's giving me a live preview of my website, just as it would if I were viewing it in a normal web browser, just taking a look at it. But the difference is, when I move my cursor over an object, the object allows me to edit it. Uh, it's even allowing me to mouse over the slideshow in the background. That's why that's lighting up like that. Um, so in this case, I've got a text box down here that I can edit, and I've got an image up here that I can edit, That's this logo here being the image. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick, simple text edit here. I'm going to choose Edit, where it says Domain Available for Purchase, and I'm going to change it to uh, Domain Name Available for Purchase, and I'm going to hit Update, and I can see what that looks like. It's applied the formatting and the font and all that, and now in the bottom left-hand corner there is a Publish button. When I hit Publish, that's when it goes live. And I'm going to get a message in the top right corner. Here we go. Success. Page saved successfully. So theoretically now, if I go back to drifttv.com, there it is. It's live. Domain name available for purchase. I added the word name. So it worked. So I'm going to head back over to Adobe Muse. Adobe Muse now says domain available for purchase because Adobe Muse has not received word that I changed a word. So I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to choose Sync with Web Version. And when I do that, it's going to reach out, it's going to pull in any changes that were made, and it's even going to run them by me. So if I'm not sure about this, if I'm not sure about this change that's been made, I can even preview it on the page, and I could say, oh yeah, I remember that, that looks good. And if I'm dealing with a client, and the client is the one making the changes, which is more likely, then those client changes may or may not be mistakes, so I get one last chance to review them. And if I'm satisfied, I hit Merge into Muse. I get a little disclosure triangle here uh, where I can either merge this change only or I can merge all of the changes. If your client made 10 changes, you may want to go one change at a time. So uh, be aware of that little triangle there. And if you don't like one thing that they did, then you can use the drop down over here and say don't merge this particular change and continue on to the next one. So I'm just going to hit Merge into Muse because I'm happy with all one of the changes that I did. And when I do that, Muse is all up to speed. It now matches the web-based version. The web-based version matches this one, and the client can continue editing or enjoying their website. So this is a really powerful feature. It's a feature that I have wanted for a while. It's a feature that I was really bummed to not have because I didn't use Adobe Business Catalyst before. And now we don't have to. We get to use our own hosting. So if you guys aren't satisfied with your host, or if you're having trouble getting this set up, I do recommend Just Host. Uh, I've used a lot of hosting companies, and they seem to be a really great value. Um, so I'll put a link in the description below, and you guys can click on that to check them out. Um, their deals are usually pretty good. So if you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe, and uh, I'll have more cool stuff coming soon, more tutorials hopefully by the end of today.